DJ more the very best reviews. Tell them none can contest. We gon' What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. I appreciate everyone for joining me tonight. Uh, today, I got a very special guest, uh, the very talented actor, Shane Johnson. Shane, welcome to the show. Hey, man, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having uh, me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy uh, you took time out to uh, join me over here. Um, of course. Yeah, um, I, I got a huge following that uh loves power and uh are all familiar with you as cooper Sachs. so they were really excited for you to come and uh you know we're going to get into a little bit of the power but first we want to you know get to know you a little bit and and uh you know your your journey into you know getting to this point okay. sounds great sounds all great. right all right so um kicking it off first uh you you come from a small town, right? Uh, what Ephrata, Washington? Right. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I mean, at the time, it's it's maybe a little different now, but my whole family's still there, actually. But about five thousand people, three stoplights. You know, it was a wow. Uh, I mean, I love it there. It's a it's where I grew up. That whole area, I kind of we popped around a bunch of little farm towns, and um, but always right there in the center of Washington. I was born in Spokane, and then moved to the middle of the state, and then. Went to Walla Walla, where I went to college in Walla Walla. At, we had a place called Whitman College, which is actually the same place that Leela, who played Angela. Oh, really? Went to college, yeah. Wow. Um, and then that was it, you know. And then after that, I bounced to, to London, and then I bounced to L.A. And now mm. I'm in New York and L.A. That's cool, man. Well, how did you come from a town of 5,000 people? to get into London, LA, New York. Like a lot of people that I talk to and things, they say, well, I'm, you know, from this small town, I can't make it or I can't do this. Or, you know, it, they don't think they can possibly get out and, and do bigger things. How did you overcome that type of, uh, you know, mindset a lot of small town people may have? Well, I think it starts with, you have to have a, you know, you, you, have, have, to be, you have to be after something. Um, and I think if, if you really have something that you are all about and passionate about, and honestly, a little bit of ignorance about the challenges, you know, if you just, if you just kind of doe eyed and like, Hey, I can do anything that, that youthful invincibility, um, can bring us a long way. But I think it's so important that, that we surround ourselves, especially when we're in the, when we're in the beginning of our journey with people that are like-minded with people that believe in you with people that are like hey man get it oh you're gonna do the best, best. Do it. You, nothing can stop you you know like we need that that's true man if we have a bunch of like practical <laughs> pragmatic people around us as artists like if you're a painter or a singer or a rapper or a writer or anything people are going to be like okay buddy that's cool um but like what are you going to do you know how are you going to pay your bills right and, we just gotta, you got to shut that noise out and just like go for broke because here's what I could tell you. And I, I mean this, I think if, if you have the talent, even just a modicum of talent and, and you stick to it and don't, right. let any, don't let anything derail you and you train and you, you network and you, and you can, and you're persistent you will win. Right, right. There's enough work for all of us. There's like, pre-pandemic, yeah, I don't know about now, but pre-pandemic, there were like, with all the streaming shows and all the, you know, the, I mean, there's so many from Hulu to Amazon to Netflix to HBO. Now there's Apple. Now there's, you know, there's so many things out there. And then there's right. all the network stuff. Right. And Plus the doors opened up better with the pandemic because now you can audition from home now right so like you could do more auditions that way like i saw i booked a lot of jobs from home instead of having to travel to auditions and do all of that stuff so um, that's pretty much what everybody's doing now yeah yeah pretty much across the board but but there's like over 500 shows or something like that in production so right. right with with that many you know, that much product out there, there's work for all of us. And then yes. I, I think that that's a, that's another thing is like, 
if we're comparing ourselves to other people, y- you you lose. Right. Right. You lose. You know, you just have to. Everybody has to run their own race, uh, keep their head down, do the work, do the grind. And if mm. you have quote unquote friends who kind of like, you know, tell you you're like like I have I have two kids. You know, I have a uh, two sons. One's fourteen. One's twelve. And their kid, their, their friends right. grew up in this keyboard warrior sort of age where they just say things to each other that I'm like, man, how do you? That's not your friend. Like, what kind of a friend tells you right. you're trash? Right. Oh, right. man, you're trash. You suck. You, you're terrible. Right. You're dumb. <laughs> you're ugly. You can't pull chicks. You know, all this stuff right. these kids t- say to each other. I'm like, this is your friend? Like, right. You're like my best friend. I'm like, dude. Yeah. I mean, my son's 17, and I can hear him sometimes in there uh, playing uh, 2K or some games. And, and some of the things he say, you know, um, I, I just be listening and I'm thinking, wow, what are, what are they doing in there? You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. So it's so it's just a matter of like, how do you manage that? Manage yeah. because you, we have to protect ourselves, man. Because because right. you can have, and this is a weird thing about being. You know this. You can have a hundred people tell you that you are the shit and that you're you know you got this, and then you have that one person that goes, eh. I don't know, man. And that's what you listen to. That's what. Yeah. That's the thing that sort of sticks in your head. And and so the the reality is is we shouldn't listen to any of it. Right. It's all, right. It's all just noise. And, right. And um, and anyway, I'm just talking about about like so so for me, I was ignorant. I didn't know any better. My parents believed in me. My parents were like, "Hey, go do whatever." They didn't know. My dad right, like right. Tricking, you know, my mom was a bunch of work, different jobs throughout. You know, they were they're both hardworking parents in in like a little farm town, and right, and they were just like, uh, okay, Shane wants to be an actor, like go for it. Right, right. That's what's up, man. That's great. Um, me, I'm from Chicago, um, so I had like a lot of the opposite people always crapping on you and and saying things all the time. So it kind of made it that. Uh, I became more quick with it and use it into my advantage with comedic. Oh, you, you say something about me. Now I got something to say back. And then it uh, became like fuel. Oh, you can't do this. Oh, well, I'm going to show you, you know, and then after being injured in the car accident, you know, I was really at the lowest point, you know, and then I decided after a few years, I'm going to try YouTube. And exactly what you said about how people can be supportive and say this and say that. And it helped build my my confidence back and say, you know what, I'm going to go back and try back into acting. I'm going to go back into comedy and do this and that. And, you know, it kind of re-inspired me some. So, you know, anybody out there watching, you know, what, what Shane said is really true. You know, um, if you got people there that support you and believe in you, definitely you know keep them around and you know don't listen to the other people or use it as fuel oh i can't do this i'm gonna show you well and then look at you look at you like you said you're you know you've gone through the trials and tribulations that you've gone through and here you are you you just were in the premiere of literally the biggest premiere ever in the history of stars you know and um with force which is there's another episode tonight um but um yeah, I, I just feel like there's enough out there for all of us. And this, people have that sort of scarcity thinking where, oh, like, that's not for me. I can't right. have, like, I should, I can't reach for the, for the stars, you know? And, um, and a lot of, and listen, a lot of times it comes from a place of, and this is what's hard too, is a lot of times that shit will come from a place of, of love. Right. You yeah. Know? Just well, like Desiree is saying. Shane, thank you. I've had family tell me that she couldn't. You know, yeah. that happened to me. Yeah, because they're, they're trying to protect you. They're just want they want you to be reasonable and they want you right. to be like, you know, but guess what? Why be reasonable? Right. We right. get one, we get one shot at this, you know. Right, right. Sometimes people are actually projecting their fears onto you as well, or what right. they believe. Like it's been times where even my parents, when I was trying to, you know, in the business world. They say, well, maybe that won't work. Just get a regular job. 
but that's what worked for them and that's what was best for them you know and that was protecting them i wanted to do something different sometimes people want to go on a different path they weren't trying to be negative you know but yeah know. And it's also different times you know like our our parents generation it was they they went they lived through some different things and things were maybe a little bit more practical i'm not trying to make an excuse for that kind of uh right right support but they don't they don't know better and but by the right, way right. but if they really love you which they do obviously it's you know your family just needs to be trained right right yeah because now they they there to support everything now and things and they see right. you know the determination and things you know but uh you know it's just a different times different generation and like how we are talking about our kids playing the games and doing this and saying all this stuff typing and and stuff you know they didn't even see they, they don't even know they friend don't even know what they look like half the time you know what i mean yeah and, and, and that's the thing too is you know uh i, I feel like my goal as a father and as a teacher you know i teach acting too my goal right. is, as a as a mentor of any kind whether to my kids or, or somebody else is to is to is to, people need to be passionate about something you know and and for for the my kids that's what i'm kind of like want to make sure that they're passionate about something it doesn't have to be what i'm interested in but i'm just going to be passionate about something and i will support you and i will believe in you and i will help lift you up and give you everything. and that's and that's the kind of friends i want around me you know and because and i told i told my son this literally yesterday i was like look because he was having some issues with a few friends i was like look you need you don't need any but it's nice if you've got one great friend, maybe two, maybe a handful of like good people that you can count on that have your back. Right, right. That's it. You don't need to have a hundred, you don't need to be the most popular person around. You don't need to, and don't listen to all that noise. You just surround yourself with the people that believe in you and bolster mm -hmm. you and lift you up. I mean, and I, I love it when you see, uh, cause you see this a lot with artists you see people bring up the people around them, you know? Right, right, yeah, yeah. You see those groups of people, like like 50, you know, he would, when he came up, he's, and if you, I don't I read his book, and he would, uh, he just cut people out. Yeah. When they were, yeah. when they started, when this, when this started, they'd be yeah. like, he'd cut them out. He'd be like, you gotta go. Yeah. But he would give- They'll people, bring you down, man. they bring in you down. In a lot of ways, yeah. And, and people in today's society don't value a good friend as much as they should, you know, cause that's so rare is rarer than sometimes a little extra money or a small little disagreement, like a good friend to be there for you. And so, you know, that's something that's valuable. And I think with this the society of cancel culture and everybody could just ghost you or just stop answering your texts or call i think they don't understand the value and and that's messed up if you do got somebody there you definitely should keep them around like you say i only got like one or two good friends myself so you know it, it happens and and they kind of did it on to me when i got injured you know i had a bunch of people that would come around and and hang around not like i was the most popular but i mean about maybe 10 people or so and just like that nobody was coming nobody wanted to hang out with with me nobody wanted to do anything you know except for like one person two people and so you know yeah. that yeah, let yeah. you know yeah that let me know right then and there um and then of course you know as things go on people see things they want to come back and say this or that but you know now you know it's you've already shown me who you are you know yeah. Yeah. So, so I think when it comes down to, I mean, I know this is a, a sort of elaborate, we've kind of gone into a whole conversation about it, but, <laughs> but, but, but it's, but it's, I think it's really important though, because it's the, it's the foundation of an artist getting a start. You know what I mean? Definitely. It's like, because it's hard. It's hard to like to turn to somebody and go, you know, I want to be, I want to be a rapper. I want to be an actor. I want to, you know, I want to, I think I, sh I think I could be a painter or an animator or or anything that's like or a doctor even like anything anything that's kind of like outside the bounds of their little family and their small thinking group that they're a part of. Right. Like, what are you talking about? Right. Right. I want to be, be an engineer and I want to build buildings and stuff. People go okay, whatever. You know. Right. So it's anyway. I, I think that that for me, not knowing any better, surrounding right. myself with great great people and 
Man, I I, 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 I cut out, cut out. My, my best friends over the years. There have been a couple of them that I was like, oh, this is my, this is my guy. And every time I would like hang out with them, yeah, I'd, like walk away, and I kind of go, why do I kind of feel like shit right now? Yeah, I feel like they're using you, hanging on or whatever, you know. And, and if you need that same support, they they not as always there for you as that, you know. Or if they got something going on, they don't hit you up. But then when you there, you know, you always call like, why you don't never hit me up when you got stuff going on? But you always around when I got something. Like, wait a minute, you know, yeah. this ain't working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that the other the other side the other side man, and I think this is a, a, one of the hardest lessons for an artist to learn is, is um, um, it's a business, definitely. You know what I mean? Definitely. And, and we a lot of artistic people like to create, and they like, and then they they kind of just drop it and they create something else, and they and they ah that didn't go anywhere, and they just they're just creating, 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 and and but we deserve to be paid for what we're doing. It's hard work, we're, man. We're, we're, we're really the baseline of the culture artists. You know what I mean? We're, right. we're establishing and a lot right. of times we're even, we're even creating technology that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Like look right. at it's all, right. it's fires. all that kind of stuff. So yeah. we're, we're, we're the dreamers of the future and stuff like that. And we're really important. Right. And, um, but we have to be business people. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? You got, you got yeah. to be able to. And, and so I think that's where a lot of artists fall down is they don't figure out the business right. because right. it's distasteful to us. We don't. Right. Like it. it feels right. gross to have to like make a phone call or ask a friend for a favor or right. try and get a hookup or or schmooze or or like write letters or send out, you know, headshots or, or whatever, yeah. whatever your thing is. But it is a business. Right. And the market, all that Listen, stuff goes with it. Yeah. This I'm I'm dealing with it now because like, you know, Instagram. Yeah, you know, I, I'm learning to, I'm learning to like Instagram, but early on I was like, what the hell? Right. This is, this is some BS. <laughs> but in our business, yeah. You gotta you know do it. You gotta this, market yourself. You gotta get out there. Instagram is hard for me as well. I mean, uh, I do the YouTube and things, and then to have to do the Facebook, Instagram, and all this stuff is difficult for me. I don't. I gotta try to keep reminding myself to post more often on Instagram and stuff as well. But uh, yeah, like like what you said, a couple things I'm gonna touch on right quick. You were saying like uh, with what you tell your kids or whatever about um you know go for it or whatever like i tell my son every single thing you see was somebody's thought first this this computer to be able to live stream uh hd tv itself it was in somebody's idea first and somebody yeah. probably said that's too difficult or that's too expensive or you can't do that or this or that and now we we have it the new car the new mercedes anything somebody had to think it first so what you're thinking like you say architecture or any of that other stuff, you got to think it first and then it can become. So like I try to tell him he wants to do that and he's getting ready to graduate high school. I can't believe it, you know. Um, so yeah, man, the world's right there for him. I mean, you look at, I'm yeah. so inspired by people like, like an Elon Musk or something. Where wow. Right. Exactly. Where he's just like, I'm sure that every, everyone's going like, this dude's nuts. What are you doing? But he's, he's actually thinking, he he worked with NASA, right, to to um, create a system where if an asteroid's going to hit Earth, they can shoot a rocket up and and like derail the asteroid. Like, yeah. this, this is this is shit from like a movie. This is from a movie. Right. You know what I mean? Right. He got Bruce Willis working on uh, working on that, right? <laughs> he, got, he got Liv Tyler and Ben Affleck and you know, right? Yeah, yeah. They, you know he he's. But what he's doing is he's look, he's going, hey, this is a this is a real potential threat. Right. He's, he's looking at how how our planet is headed. He's going, hey, hey we got to maybe think about populating, a, you know, settling into another planet. Right. That right. Crazy. That right. Definitely. And then to be able to to think about it and do it, like I tell my son, you make the money and you you have the vision. You can hire the geniuses to work on these things you want to do. You know, like he's putting together the boring machine 
where they'll be in the pressurized tube underground and be able to track like how are you thinking and do it's just amazing so i i definitely feel the same with you and and another thing switching up a little bit we were talking about you mentioned animation a lot of people don't know you're actually getting into animation and you worked on one of the best damn games ever fallout new vegas oh yeah that was a little, a little bit about that. i love that game and how they had at the end with the guy living in the in the chamber and and live and extended his life or whatever i mean that well tell us a little bit about that and, and your your foray into animation well, well you know i got um those are two separate things like one of them's okay. voice one of them's like voiceover work which i've okay. I've, I've done a lot of over the years and um and yeah, I, you I, know, I just kind of fell into it as well, right? What's that? Like Final Fantasy, also, right? Yeah, like I've done. Yeah. I mean, those are those are a lot of the things that I have gotten credit for. But I also, you know, do dubbing for things for Netflix for fun sometimes. Okay. Um, and I uh, I've done probably I don't know maybe like ten video games, and um, and then I was like the voice of Harley Davidson for a while for like TV commercials. And, oh wow! You know, just just things like that have been, have been fun over the years. But, uh, so, and I don't even, I never even played fallout in new Vegas. I mean, I've seen, I've seen okay. stuff from it, but, but that was, you know, that was just a fun gig. All those things have been a lot of fun, but, um, but when it comes to the animation, I, I just had this, I had an idea for a, an animated series that, um, that I just f really fell in love with. And I was kind of, you know, kind of, I don't want to say I was broke, but I was kind of like, I was, I wasn't like real flush at the time. Right. And, and I had this great idea and they were like, well, listen, what you should do is you should put a, like a, you should do an episode or, or at least a teaser and, and then take and that around to help the project. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. So that's a great idea. And so I looked into getting it animated. All of the things that, that I could find were, you know, American dad, family guy, the Simpsons, all those things, they're all like animated in South Korea. Okay. Right. And, and for me to get, at least at the time, and you get something animated like 20 minutes of material or something like that was going to cost, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wow. And I was, I was like, well, that's not an option. So, right. <laughs> um, and so wow. I basically, I didn't know it was that expensive. So, yeah. oh, it's crazy, man. Wow. Um, and so I, I was like, there's got to be a way to, to do this. And so I started just, you know, doing research and looking into animation and, and and found some really cool animation programs where you can basically uh, create, um, you know, you draw something, design a character in different ang from different angles, and and then basically rig them with bones so that you can position them and do the keyframes and stuff like that. And and so and so you don't necessarily have to be like an incredible artist. Okay. You just have to you just have to be able to, and, and it'll blow your mind. Like if I I'll send you. I'll send you a link to uh, the teaser I ended up making. It like it it looks Definitely. great, and it was um, it was just me tinkering and sort of trial and error for like six months, teaching myself how to end. crash course, going on YouTube and going, how do I do this? How do I do that? So like little five year old kids teaching me how to do stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can learn so much on YouTube. I started doing this by looking at YouTube videos and self teaching myself. So. You know, um, you you can learn yeah, a lot yeah. on it on there, and, and yeah, like yeah. you say, you just got to be determined, and then also not think about it too much. Like you know about how difficult some things can be. You know, just just go for it. You know, so yeah. If I if I had a super uh, along those lines, man. If I if I had a superpower, um, it would be my superpower is that I'm I'm willing to try something. I'm willing to, like a lot of people, they go, oh, my computer stopped working. Right. And they're like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> right. You're going to yeah. tinker with it and figure it out as best you can, huh? Man, I, 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 I could rebuild a computer from scratch. Oh, I, wow. I fixed probably 30 to 40 computers in my life. Because I'm like, at first I was like, I, I took one apart. I opened it up and I was like, what the hell is all this crap? <laughs> and then you just start you just start figuring it out. But most right. people, most people would look at a puzzle like that and go, nah. Same with like an acting career. Most people go like, oh, they they look at the end goal. 
they look at somebody on TV or somebody in a movie and they go like, I can't have that. It's way out there. You know what yeah, I mean? Definitely, definitely. But, I mean, but if, you, but if you break it down and you don't just look at the computer and you look at the inside and you see this mess of all these components and you go like, I have no idea. Instead of doing that, you just start with one thing and you go, what is this thing? Yeah. And then what yeah. is this thing? And pretty soon you understand all the parts that get you to the TV, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, and that's that blueprint and that willingness to just go after each thing. Like, you know, for starters, I go uh, look at find somebody that you that you that inspires you and see how they operate. Right. Like I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a dork for saying this, man. I know that dork's such an old word that made me sound my age. But like The Rock, I'm really inspired by The Rock. And I'm inspired yeah. by him oh, and Page 52. I'm, I'm inspired by him because he's got this gene that I don't have, which is he wants more. Yeah. All the time. Like he just seems hungry to go, oh, he's got like this is his this is his brand, right? And he's got like uh he wants to he's the biggest movie star on earth. He's the most popular guy on the planet. He's got like his Terramana now that his his uh, you know uh tequila drink, drink yeah. And he's got like He's hooked up with Under Armour and he's hooked up with like so many brands that yeah. I'm going. It's at this point, and this is the thing that's interesting when it's not, when it's no longer about money. Right, right. Then, yeah. what, then, then that's when life really starts, I think, creatively. When it's not, when it's no longer about money. Because for, for The Rock, this, none of this is about money anymore. Right. He got everything paid for by now. What is for, for, the, for the next fifteen lifetimes, man? Right. He, he can. He he could. He can't spend his money. Right. Just like uh, we were just talking about uh, Elon Musk. It's not about money with him no. either. He doesn't no. even take a salary from Tesla. He's, he's the richest person on earth, right? He was right three hundred. I, I mean, he goes up and down depending on his right. Stock, but he's worth like. Hundred billion dollars. Like, what are you gonna do with that? Right, right. Uh, you know, what? he's like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix the the problem. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna buy Mexico. You know, he's he. Can, <laughs> you know, at this point, what can he? You know, he can do. Right. He can do anything, and yet he chooses to. Same with him physically, right? He's at, and he's at the gym all the time, and you go, dude. Nobody, nobody looks bigger or stronger than the Rock. And he's right. still pushing himself to get better, and I'm like, if, right. I could just, if that, if I could put that in a pill, definitely, I would be yeah. all about that because I don't have that man. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, shit, I'm right? Still, I don't want to do anything. Maybe, maybe the Rock got those limitless uh pill from exactly. that movie. <laughs> exactly. he's on it, man. Um, so uh, one more thing before we uh talk about a little bit of power, man. Yeah. So you're getting your start into the acting career. You was in Saving Private Ryan, okay? What was that like? I know you was just, what, a soldier, but you in a Spielberg production. You see this huge ordeal. How did that inspire you? Did you start to think you were making it? And then also Black Cadillac, which was based on a true story. You were like the main cast member and like Randy Quaid and things. So how was your start? when you were starting to do that? I know it was a few years between the two, but a little bit about that. Well, Saving Private Ryan, I was still, I was going to college still. And um, I was uh, working, I, I was studying in London and they cast Saving Private Ryan, which I remember they had these posters up for Saving Private Ryan. I didn't even have headshots yet. Um, and I was like, what a stupid name for a movie, Saving Private Ryan. I mean, now we've heard it so much now that right, so right. I was like, Saving, you got to come up with something better than that. But anyway, I, I was like, all right, whatever. I submitted my headshot. And I had to have a friend take them. Um, and then uh, and they called me in. And I, I auditioned and they and then they uh, I, and it was like one of my first auditions. So I didn't know. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I before I came back to the United States a few weeks later. I called up the office, the casting office, and I was like, hey, this is my name is Shane Johnson. I auditioned for that movie. Um, like, should I should I stick around? And they were like, no, no, it's fine. Go ahead and go back to the United States. You're, you know, you didn't get it, basically. Right. So then I, I was like, okay, whatever. And so I, I went back to, to L.A., basically. It was actually Portland area. Okay. 
And um, and then that same day, like literally, I landed and they called me and they said, "We need you back here." So, Damn, so, just wasted all that money and time. Yeah, and I was a local hire in London, so they were like, "Yeah, you gotta you gotta fly yourself back here." And I was like, "Thanks." Right. But we spent um, maybe two and a half weeks or something like that in Ireland filming all that beach stuff and all the stuff the aftermath of that and it listen it was it was incredible it was incredible to work with and around you know tom hanks who i've done a couple of things with and you know vin diesel had just that was his start yeah he got killed with the little girl he said put him back and uh he wasn't even in the movie and spielberg saw his self-tape or something a self-movie right he he wrote talk about being a self-starter he wrote produced starred in directed a film that got into sundance okay yeah because then i think he wrote a book about doing that or something as well didn't he uh he borrowed yeah he borrowed money or something to get that all done sold his car or something yeah, I'm sure that's true and then so yeah, he, he the car Spielberg, to yeah. and uh and he called up the writer of Saving Private Ryan, and he was like, you "Gotta write this guy a part." And wow. so he literally just just made up that that part kind of after the fact because Spielberg was so impressed by by Vin Diesel. So Giovanni Ribisi, um, Adam Goldberg, um, amazing uh, movie, Jeremy amazing Hayden. cast. I mean, yeah. Nathan Fillion. That was Nathan Fillion's first big movie. Um, mm. I mean, there was just so the cast was in, was insane. And, right. And one of the things that struck me about all those people, most of them, is that they all were out there doing their own shit too. You know. Right. Matt Damon oh. was in it as well, and Tom Sizemore was excellent in it as well. You know. Yeah, and, he's great. Too bad he's you know he's had some some hard times. Yeah. Had some some mental health issues, honestly, and some, right. some drug, drug issues. But he's but he's a great actor. Excellent um, actor. Yeah. yeah. But, and uh, I want to say one thing real quick. Like, that's a great point, what you said about Vin Diesel. You never know who sees your work. You just got to go for it. When he made that, he didn't think Steven Spielberg would be seeing that film and put him in, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that um, that that's the, the, the other thing is, is that's such a great training round to uh, to make something like that, to be part of a film to even if there's not much money in it or if there's no money like my first movie that i starred in was a movie i moved to la they had backstage west back then which was just a you know a periodical that came out where you could you know look for basically like personal ads except that they were like hey we're we're doing a student film or we're doing this and that and there was no money in it they basically said we'll give you a meal and we'll give you a copy of the tape right and I got this movie that we shot over like maybe 20 days and I starred in, it was like my, you know, I was the main guy in it, which was incredible. Didn't right. get paid anything. The movie never went anywhere. Went to some, did some festivals or whatever, but I got to work with other actors. I got to work with the director. I got to be on set. And that was invaluable to me moving forward. Right. Right. Because, because about a, a few years later after that, I did, I did black Cadillac and I was, I was ready. Yeah, right. And that's a good movie as well, uh, Black Cadillac. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And and if you haven't seen um The Possession of Michael King, that movie is like I'm very proud of that thing. I did it right before I got power. I just um, Okay. I'm gonna check that out. It's it's like a you know horror film, but it's it's I think it's really well done. Um right. and and it was a lot of fun to carry a movie like that. But anyway, uh so, so, so to f- finish answering your question, man, Saving Private Ryan was terrifying for me and amazing at the same time. I had some cool conversations with Spielberg, with Tom Hanks, and my, my stuff was with Tom Hanks, and he was really cool. And, um, to have Spielberg yelling at me through a bullhorn was, you know, right, like, right. It was, it was, it was terrifying. Like, I, there's the part in the movie where the sound is vacuumed out of the movie in the beginning. In the beginning, the sounds vacuumed out. Tom right, Hanks. right. He got like a ringing in his ear type thing. Right, shit. right, right, right. Like shell shock sort of. Right. Thing. Yeah. And and, um, and then the guy like picks up his own arm. Yeah, yeah, and he's walking around like looking, don't know where to yeah. go. Yeah. And, and then I and I'm the guy that sh- that shakes Tom Hanks out of that. 
Oh, okay, okay. Like, it's like this. It's it's literally like my face fills the frame. I'm about five years old, and <laughs> and and and. But nobody else was really there when I for the close up. It was just me, the cameraman, and I'm behind the cameraman was Spielberg with a bullhorn, just yelling yelling at me, and I thought he was pissed, and he was just getting a performance out of it. Right, right. But, okay. but we did the beach stuff, man. It was wild because it felt. It felt pretty real. It looks it. The guy yeah, was putting yeah. his nuts back in and everything. And well, yeah. what they so they had. I'll just tell you this very quickly because I think it's pretty interesting. Is so we come out of the boats. You you look up. They had those pill boxes, which is where the Germans had their Gatlin guns and stuff like that. Right. They're firing down on you. You can hear it, and you can see the fire coming out of the barrels of the gun. Oh, so wow. it, it's, it looks and sounds real. Right. And they had high pressure PVC pipes in the in the water so that as you're running through the water, you take doo, 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 and oh, you're looking wow. up and you're seeing it. And then as you hit the beach, they were like they're little little tiny flags. They were like, Don't step here, don't step there, run here, run there. And so as you're running through, these detonations are going off. And the thing that made it feel kind of the realist was was the debris raining down on your helmet as you're right. running. This felt like, oh my God, we're being attacked. And then we, and then they, um, they had about a dozen amputees that they would build arms and legs for. And as they're running, they, they were stunt guys as well. So they'd be running with a fake leg. They'd step on a detonation and it would blow their leg off. Wow. Like th this is, this is 1996 when we shot right. that. So these were like or green screen stuff. Yeah. It's practical effects. It's like, it's, they're just doing it. And that's what's in the movie. You know wow. And so that was that was like wild, and it, it was yeah. it was fun to be a part of, and obviously it was an incredible movie at the time. I didn't know, you know, I was I was I was maybe twenty years old at the time, so was, right. Um, uh, and then of course it was downhill from there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's how acting can go, you know, it's an up and down business, but yeah, once you get rolling, you get rolling though. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of getting rolling, we know. That you got to power eventually. What before you got to power? When did you really think you got it going? Because power, you got it. What twenty fourteen, right? Yeah, we filmed that. We started filming in twenty thirteen. Okay, um, all right. I'm, you know, listen. Some people move. I, I remember hearing this story about. I think it was one of the Hemsworth brothers, who uh, I think it was Liam, and they're from Australia, right? Right, right. So he was like, "Yeah, I came out, man." It was, it was like an article. He was like, I came out to LA. And I was like sleeping on my brother's couch or whatever he was doing. He was like, and he goes, I almost gave it up. I almost gave it up. I, because I'd been out there, I'd been in LA for three months and like nothing was happening. <laughs> and I was like, what? That's nothing, right? Man, that's what I'm saying. Right. What are, you, what are you talking about? He's like, <laughs> you know, right before I was giving it, gonna, you know, pack it in and go back to Australia, I booked the Hunger Games or something like that. And I was like, wow. man, get out of here. Wow. I will, but, a, yeah, you don't know how lucky he got. Oh, man. But, but so, uh, so it's funny because in your career, you will, you will feel like you have so many times when you're like, this is the thing. This is the thing. And then it's not. You know what I mean? But you, we have to keep that belief. We have to keep believing that this is a thing. Did I think, did I think that power was going to be the thing? Honestly, right. honestly, I was, it was, you know, I've, I've done like probably 70 plus things, you know, in my career. Right. So right. did I, did I know that power was going to be the thing that caught fire? No, I didn't, man. I yeah, because it kind of came out of nowhere. It was only, what, eight episodes the first season with a rapper, 50 Cent. A lot of people didn't know the cast too well. And and you've been there now for the whole entire ride, you I know? know? It's crazy, man. So it's such a crazy. huge blessing. Yeah. Such a huge blessing. And it wasn't Star's brand either. You know, Star's was doing, like, Da Vinci's Demons. Out Black Sails. Black Sails, a pirate show. And then they had, like, Spartacus, right. which was, like, you know, Roman, ancient yeah. Roman or whatever, not ancient, but you know what I mean? Like medieval right, times. Right. Those stuff. And so it was, so the, then all, and, and their brand was taking you places. It was like historical dramas. And, and so to come out and have this current right. urban drug drama with like sexiness and like violence and all this stuff. And it was, 
it was just not their brand. And yeah. so, so I think we were all kind of like, well, who knows? Let's see. And so when it took off, I, I mean, we were all surprised. And now, now look, we got like, it's the number one show on the network. And we got three, three spinoffs. Right. Right. So everybody here know you as Cooper Sacks. You know, Tommy called you dirty. Well, he called you ball sacks. I ball. throw in the dirty cause he's dirty. So I, I call it nickname DBS, Dirty Boss. <laughs> What's it like to play this complicated character that was the good guy, gets pissed because the law is not working the right way, takes the law into his own hands, then stops, gets a conflict of interest now. Like, he's got so many layers, you know. Then he was kind of lonely at one point. Now he's kind of found love confused because he lost a job now got a great job but conflicted what's it like playing this character for so long with with so many different layers and things what's what's going on with with dbs well it's <laughs> funny you, you laid out a lot of it man because yeah. it's, it's been uh you know it started off he was very in, inside the bounds of the law and he was a prick he was always a prick but he was he was doing everything by the book and then after just losing and losing and losing, I think he just was like, you know what? Um, he just found a justification to kind of plant a little evidence, you know, but, but listen, I know, I know he's guilty. I just can't prove it. So I'm right. just going to help myself prove this. And then that, but then that's the, that's the little Avenue that I opened up as Cooper Sachs opens up to, to sort of start this whole ball rolling where he, and then it ultimately gets to the point where I, I turns out that I'm going to lose at the end is power. This is the first show Then I end up with a gun. I end up Woo! going to the club going, I'm going to handle this myself. And really the only reason I'm still around is because in a way to reach saved me, you know, cause he did. Cause he handled it before you had to, he got there first, you know, he got there um, first. but but now, now being, you know, now that I lost my job and chose to kind of make a deal with the devil in, in terms of Davis McLean, uh, that was that was kind of my alternative was admitting defeat and going and working with my family and being miserable for the rest of my life. So I was, it was kind of like, it, it wasn't that hard of a choice. I think once right. Davis came to me and said, you know, hey, come work for the dark side and, um, and I think that that, you know, I think at first Cooper's thinking, hey, you know what? I, I can do this. I can be a defense attorney. Why not? I know the law and I know both sides. I could be great at this. And then once he starts to go, oh, I see how Davis operates. It's like, right. It's just all about the money, you know? Yeah. Because you was going hard on Tariq like a prosecutor still. Like, wait a minute. You forgot you don't do that job anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard for him. You know, it's hard for him to switch really, it off. Huh? Let it go. Yeah. Because, because he also has an unfinished business with the St. Patrick's. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Like he never got that. Like Ghost was his Moby Dick. You know, he was like Ahab after Moby Dick, and 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 it, it, he got away. And so it's like this un, unfinished point. business. That then Tariq steps into that same role a little bit for him, and um, but he also sees. I think that the difference is is that I think that I believe that Cooper sees the goodness in Tariq as well. He knows he's guilty of a lot of shit, but he also, right. he also kind of has a little bit of, you know, I, I don't want to call it fatherly, like, but it is kind of like paternal hope that this kid can be something better right. than his dad, you know? Right. And I know, I know he killed his dad, but I also know that his dad was a monster. Right. So in a way, it's like, well, you actually did a good thing, kid. But right. But I know you are capable of doing some stuff still. Yeah. You, yeah. You're still a murderer. You know, um, I ain't gonna lie. Sax pissed me off when he followed him to the to the cemetery. I'm like, man, what is he doing? Recording. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me ask you this, though. So some people say Sax is a bad guy. Is Sax a bad guy, good guy, or is he confused? What would you say? Well, it's funny. Like, I, I really love, I'm a fan of this show, and I, and I really love shows like this where 
the um, complicated the, characters. Huh? Yeah, and and the and the the heroes of the show are actually the bad guys. You know, that's yeah. true. You know, you have everybody loved Ghost, and and he was a serial killer and a drug dealer <laughs> and a right. womanizer, and you know, and a, cheating on his wife and all those sort of things. Like, if you really break it down, you go, okay, well, he's actually a bad guy, but what he really is is a dark hero. He's somebody that has faults that we can look at and go, I understand this guy. I understand why he's right. doing this. He's trying to make a better life for his family. He's he, There's stuff in his way. and Like, Dexter is one of my favorite shows. And yeah. that, that dude was killing somebody at least <laughs> one, every week. Right, chopping them up and everything. You know, so, and I was like, I can't wait till the next episode. So, <laughs> right. So, you know, I... I think that I think it really taps into that that part of us that doesn't necessarily. Um, it's kind of like a fantasy kind of stuff because it's stuff that we we don't normal you know the average person doesn't necessarily go oh I want a new car so they just go out and you know smash a window and take it right and, but in this world in this fantasy world stuff like that happens you know what I mean? yeah definitely but, um, and so I I think that is Cooper Sacks a bad guy. I think that initially he wasn't, and I think that he's. But I think he's compromised, and in wow. his in being compromised, he's become more complex, more interesting to play for sure. Like every year, the layers that have been added to Cooper um, have made him a lot more. You know, once power ended with me with the gun, being willing to to kill to kill somebody, and then bringing in my niece and my family, adding those complications, and then bringing in. Now I'm working with Method Man, and um, who's doing an excellent job from How High, from one of my favorite rappers to Wu Tang to, damn, he looked like a damn good lawyer. He's nailing this role, you know. Yeah, he and he's great, man. He's just a he's just also just a great guy. guy. Like, Earth, cool, huh? great actor, cool. Always elevates the room, you know. Really about the work. Right. Comes in ready. He and I go toe to toe, and and it's and it's so much fun. I feel like he and I elevate each other a lot, and um, it's been a lot of fun to do to dance with him. You know, right, and, right. Uh, and and I and I and I hope I hope we get more and more sort of that kind of shit to do because it's it's fun. Yeah. The way it's set up, you all are gonna clash next season because Sax man, say what you want, Sax figures stuff out. And he's yeah. going to figure out, already we can tell, he's going to figure out that Method Man, you know, Davis McClain is the one instead of Red Man, who I also love Red Man as well. They're two of my favorite rappers. Yeah. But he's figure it out. We know. I just can't wait to see it unfold, how they're going to do it. But I think that might get Sax in trouble. We'll yeah, see. you know, it's, it's, <laughs> Sax is, it's funny too, because something, something else that occurs to me is, um, you know, Sax is pretty, um, He's beaten up by by this job too. Like you have to, you know, if you just think about it as a human, it take you take that job home with you. Well, if you think about it, like as if if he's a real person, right? If Cooper Sacks is over the course of a handful of years has had so many people die, right? Right. Like, his whole office, <laughs> his, his whole office from right from Greg Knox, who was his friend, to to the guy that was betraying us, but was my friend, uh, Miguel Sandoval, who was my right. friend. Donovan. Donovan. Who Angie. Was Angela, you know. and who you and wanted to really be friends with. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, exactly. And then all the, <laughs> all the uh, other peripheral sort of characters that I was involved with from, you know, from Proctor's wife, you know, and Proctor. And uh, it, there's so many people that have just dropped Right. I, I feel like Cooper's also kind of like on edge in a different kind of way because he's just seen so much death. Like there's a great there's a great line. I think I think it's Monique uh, who plays Blanca Rodriguez. She she says something. I, I we were having an argument and I say, look, at, what's the common denominator with all these deaths? And I, we have this board up and there's all these people that are dead. And I say, it's James St. Patrick. And she's like. And you. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. So it's a. Uh, it's been a an awesome ride, and it's so much more fun every year. You know, some people are like, "Do you get bored playing it?" And I'm like, "But every year, it's it's there's more to it. 
Right. Every right. year it's more complex. So every year I get to dive. And I think now that he's got this love interest, mm-hmm. um, that's challenging because now he's got this, he also has something that, as opposed to just being aggressive and, and, and driven in a business way, he also has his heart involved. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, let me uh, tell everybody watching. We got about 150 people watching. Thanks, everybody. If you got a couple questions you want to ask, go ahead and type it in, and I'll ask uh, Shane uh, a couple of you all's questions. Um, you got a birthday coming up. Uh, happy birthday as well. Sort of, yeah. I don't have a birthday this year. I'm born on a, a leap day. Oh, so, uh, okay. That's right. 29th. That's right. Yeah. So, so I have a birthday every, every four years. So, so how does that work as a leap year, baby? I actually never spoke with one. Do you really celebrate it every four years or do you just say 28th on the years is not? No, man, I'm 11. I've had 11 <laughs> birthdays. And that's it. My kids, Ooh. my kids are actually older than I am. <laughs> Agent and dog ears over there, man. Yeah. Well, not dog ears, what reverse dog ears, I would say, rather, you know, instead yeah. of. Uh, so it's, yeah, you're right. But it's, yeah. Um, yeah, so we, I just celebrated on the 28th or the 1st, March 1st or whatever. So it's, okay. and then, and then the thing that's cool is, I mean, because we celebrate every year, but, but on every four years when I actually have a birthday, it's like a blowout. So it's right. kind of like, so what it really is, is like every four that's years. That's actually pretty cool, cooler in a way. Cool special birthday it is more special not only is it your birthday it's a special day that doesn't come around but once every four years wow i didn't think about it that way it's extra special day yeah it's certainly better than like i have a couple of bros that i have three brothers actually but two of them are born like one's born the day after uh christmas right and then one's born new year's eve and it's like like people people are already doing stuff you know Right, right. Like I got you, you get all the Christmas presents as a kid. You get all the Christmas presents, and then the next day is your birthday. Right. Yeah, I got a yeah. friend born on Christmas, and I thought it was the coolest as a kid. Not as an adult. Now, nah, every like you say, everybody's already doing stuff, and yeah, you know, it's not the same. So it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. The yeah. New Year's Eve is the same way, but yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. um, Ray asked. What's your thoughts about Force? And uh, he said, what about Rojas? That's my guy that I played, you know. But <laughs> Hey, man. I, I, here, here, I'll tell you this. I all thought right. um, I thought Force, first of all, I think the world of Joe Sikora. I think he's like amazing, a great dude, first of all. Yeah. And I think that he's. Um, and he's from uh, Chicago, too. Yeah. And I think he's yeah. an incredible actor. The bear. And- and I think that the show's got a great setup. Um, I really thought that uh, in your character, you know, like I, like I was saying to you, there's certainly a potential for for a future there because you, yeah. you know, obviously there's some beef there, which I don't quite understand. But right. the groundwork for beef was laid, like, make a call. Let's, let's, <laughs> oh, no, say, wait, we're going to lay low. Right, right. Wait, wait till they get comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we putting in that call. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so he, uh, but that guy, um, Diamond, Diamond. Isaacs, Isaacs, yeah. Isaacs, I thought he was fantastic. Like, just kind of stoic and comfortable yeah. and easy. And he kind of let, he kind of lets you do the work. And I think that's, you know what I mean? He, but he had a lot going on. Like I think he's right. a, like I think he's a football player, right? Right, right. He played in the NFL for a few years. Yeah, yeah. But big guy, like, real cool. Yeah, uh, he seems like a really talented, and I really liked. Uh, I, I mean, I love Tommy Flanagan. Yeah, he's an excellent actor. You know, excellent actor. So yeah. and and yeah, you guys are getting that show's getting sexy over there too. Man, I was really happy to see it, too. I mean, (laughs) you know, book two is a younger crowd, but that's the thing that's cool about Power Universe. I call it the PCU. You know, they got the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's the PCU. And so the PCU is so good because you have people 15, 16 that watch it all the way up to my mom who turns like 85 on the 16th. 
and she wow. can't get enough of it. So from 16 to 85 demographic, that's huge. Like very few shows <clears throat> have people that's in their teens, 20s, 30s, 40, 50s, 60s, eight. Wow. And so, like, what is what are some of your stories of maybe fans coming up to you from all kind of age and as well, black, white, Hispanic, Latino, all of that, you know, Asian. Yeah. Everybody watches it. I mean, it, it crosses all kind of boundaries, genres, demographics. What, what's your thoughts on that and, and some of your experiences? Yeah, you know, I, you're right. Like one of the ones that, that one of the experiences that surprises me the most sometimes is uh, my kids are um, go to it. Like my wife and kids are Jewish. And so they go to it. They go to a Jewish day school out in Los Angeles. And um and I'll be at the school sometimes and these like old Jewish ladies that work there. And mm -hmm. one of them who must, must be in her seventies and she's, uh, what up with it is in? yeah, she's like, <laughs> she stops me and she's like, Oh, you know, I just, I love the show so much. You're so great in the show. And she goes, I'm such a huge fan. And I'm going, it just, just to me, I just demographic wise, I was going, right. what? And then my kids, <laughs> my kids coaches, you know, the coaches at the school there, they 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 watch the show and some of the teachers watch the show and some of the kids parents like i mean so yeah that's that's been the the because in my mind it was kind of like separate worlds i was like i got that right. that pocket where i'm kind of anonymous right they, they don't know who i am and then i found out like no a lot of those people know who you are and they they i mean listen don't approach you know, so you've got i think we've got like 15 million people watching the show right yeah. right it's nuts. It's so and then nuts. if you count the YouTube verse, it's another 15 to 20 million easily that watch all of these YouTubers. I saw you with my friend Lamont the other night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interview. He's a really cool guy. You know, it's other people in this world that do Mark Dark movie by so many people that cover this show. If you add up all the views and everything, every millions, millions yeah. of people watch this. Yeah, it's definitely it's good enough. Listen. I remember a few years ago, I was riding out to, I was just driving with my family and I, and that, that a Cardi B song came on and, and she, and I can't remember what the name of the song is, but she's uh, singing about love and stuff like that. And she goes like that Tommy and Keisha, and she just sort of dropped it into, this, <laughs> into the lyric and, right. and, then she, and kept it moving. And I was like, oh man, we're, we're like part of the culture because. Right. The lexicon. You know, she didn't. Yeah, she didn't have to like break it down and go. Okay, so you know that move, that show, and then these characters. She, everybody knew Tommy and Keisha, and she's like everybody knows. Yep, yep. Speaking of Tommy, here's a question. Danny girl says, Shane, you originally auditioned for the Tommy role. Could you give us your version of the Tommy impression? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> well. She's right. I, I did a, a originally audition for Tommy and then I auditioned for Greg Knox. Um, and then I auditioned for Sax. Right. But my listen, my Tommy was not like Joe Secora's Tommy. <laughs> you know, mine was just uh mine was just kind of like a tougher sort of street version of of me. Right. You, know? you got a good New York accent or well I didn't I I, I didn't I don't think I really um, accent. Nah, but I don't really think that. I don't really think that like Omari was doing a New York accent. No, he doesn't. We've talked about that on on some of my videos and other things. He doesn't really have a New York accent either. You're right. You know, he originally no. from Georgia. He don't have a country accent. He kind of just like. And I think that that's. Oh. I think they just kind of are like, look, you know, the standard American thing, and I think Joe. Joe kind of uses like a, a mixture of Brooklyn and Chicago and kind of puts it in the street. Right. And, yeah. and it just kind of like, it's his own. Um, I mean, what would you call that? Would you think is Joe doing New York or is he doing Chicago? I wouldn't really say he's New York and I wouldn't exactly say Chicago, but it's like kind of a mixture. Every now and then you can hear a new, I do a, a, a Tommy impression. Hey, what are you trying to do over here? You want to come over here? I, I saw you coming this way and I had to pull out a gun, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I think he just kind of has his own, yeah. his own pattern, his own sort of thing that he's created, yeah. which he's stuck with since the beginning. And I think it's great. 
for me, right. I, for me, it was just like, it was just a different side of me. You know, the, the thing that's funny is Cooper. I'm not, I'm not like Cooper Sacks at all. You know, the thing that I bring to Cooper Sacks that I think that I, that, who is what that is me is like the, the humor and kind of the, the wry sort of like, you know, kind of, um, looking at things a little bit sideways and, and finding the humor and stuff. I think that that's right. something that I bring to Sacks, but, um, but the sort of highly educated, privileged sort of, you know, like went to Yale sort of energy. That that's not me at all. You know, like I said, I grew up in a little farm town. So right, right. So that's just a great job across. And that's something that that's frustrating to to a lot of actors. It's not frustrating to me, but it's frustrating to a lot of actors right. that that they they're stuck with their casting. Right, you right. Look how you look, you know. That's and, true. And you sound how you sound, and and you you got the body that you have, and so when you walk in a room, casting directors before you even open your mouth, yeah, they're like going, "Oh, Shane, yeah, come on in," and they're already making notes. They've already made like fifty percent of their mind up, yeah, about whether or not right for this part. Yeah, because uh, the same with me. I mean, you know, um, I was in prison. I'm not a a prisoner and have all that you know but that's what they saw i mean i can put my mind in that space and then that's what i'll be you know but at the same time i filmed power i filmed a show on showtime work in progress and i was in four episodes of that and i'm in the office wearing cashmere sweaters and i'm a copywriter you know working in a agency and it's a comedy um that's you crazy. know yeah, so one show I was filming, I'm in prison. Then the next day, I'm in the office wearing sweat, nice sweaters and, and the comedy and, and things. So, you know, it, it is what it is. I used to work in the office and different things and stuff. So, you know. Well, I, and, and that's the way you want it to be, right? As an actor, exactly. you, you want to be able to stretch yourself. Yeah. Like, if you've seen uh, other things that, like, Joe has done, for instance, he's, he's really done all kinds of stuff. Yeah, he has. Um, and so and so have I. You know, I've, I've played so many different types of characters. I mean, before Definitely. before landing this, most of what I've played is like I can't tell you how many times I've been a, a murderer, uh, a pedophile, um, been murdered, right. something times. Like I've most of the time, I, for whatever reason, most of my stuff is like. I always get cast as like an asshole. Right. And, and so then I had to stop and go, am I in a, am I, am I an asshole? What's going on? Here? Right. No, but I, but again, like I said, I but think you it, nailed it with sex. I, I'll definitely well, say that. You thank know. you. But I think, I think part of that is that, that, like I said, it's that first impression that right. before you even open your mouth. And then, and then the second thing is, it's like, okay, well, what does he sound like? And, right. um, I don't have a question. I just want Shane to say, "Hey, Desiree." <laughs> hey, Desiree. So you know, <laughs> there you go, Desiree. You know, you, you're stuck with um, you're stuck with what you are, and I think that as we as our um, characters build, as your as your career builds, and you become more and more of a household name, that's when you get to do. I think that's when you really get the opportunity to kind of branch out and do whatever you want. Right, right. Um, Atara, I did see this. It was I forgot what show it was on, but I saw the picture where Joe Sakura played a pregnant man or something, or pregnant. Yeah, yeah I saw that too, and it was like um, it was a it was a comedy series, I believe. It was um, I feel like it was with like that strangers with strangers with candy chick or something, some some kind of thing like that. Okay. Um, and it was, but so yeah, he's done that. He's played like you know, an abused guy. I saw him do an episode of like SVU where he was this really abused and sort of like really fragile sort of character. And, um, you know, we just, we, you get what you get, you know what I mean? Right. 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 Just nail it. You book it nail do it, your best. Like you said, what we mentioned earlier with Vin Diesel, you never know who may see it. It all goes into your body of work and you just keep improving. You use that experience, you know, and, uh, you know, keep getting better. Um, you know, people love what you're doing here as well. Um, like they say, you've been doing a fabulous job uh as Sax. Um, you've been 
a great actor as well. A lot of people here love it. Love Uncle Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. I, I appreciate the love. I really do. Yeah. I do. I, I mean, it's funny because it's fun to hate Cooper Sacks. I mean, I, me too. Sometimes I'm like, oh man, what an idiot. But, um, but it's also fun to just to just like commit to it 100. percent And I get a lot of hate, a lot of hate mail, a lot of hate messages, and um, really. People take oh. it too damn far, man. But but to me, Michael Rainey was was getting all kind of stuff when he killed ghosts. Well, and that's the thing. You you know, so much of this as an audience, you put it on the actors. You're like, it, because that's what you're seeing, and that's what you're right, seeing. right. That's, that's you what you're the the best. Right. But the reality is, is it's it's in terms of who's responsible for this more than anyone, it's the writers. Writers, right, right. You know, because like I remember when, just quickly, I remember when, uh, you know, Courtney came to me about this spinoff, and she said, "So, hey, would you want? Would you be interested in being a part of this? Something along the lines. Would you be interested in being a part of this uh, um, Tariq spinoff?" Right. And I was like, I was like, first of all, I was like, "Hell yeah! Thank you so much. Well, that's amazing." And then as she walked away, I, I was thinking, like, who the hell wants a Tariq spinoff? Right, right, right. Especially and, after what he did. Right, because the the heat was all the way up through power was literally every decision, every choice that Tariq made led to somebody's death and was just he was betraying people constantly. His dad would say, Hey man, just do this and things will be cool. He would do the opposite. His mom would say, Hey, stay in the yeah. house. He would leave. Mm -hmm. Uncle Tommy would say, hey, man, don't tell anybody about this thing. He'd run out and tell somebody. I mean, he's right. constantly getting people killed. They got Kane and killed. You know, yeah. got his sister killed. I, I'm glad they showed that in uh, the, the next to last episode, too, when everybody was waiting for him in his dream. Uh, you know, he got a whole room full of people he didn't messed over, like you yeah. said. <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, is the, my point of bringing that up was it's unbelievable how great like Courtney is at crafting story and because she she saw it she knew I was going like Tariq right are, are we gonna catch an audience and then she was like hell yeah we are and she she just knew that she could like season six gently sort of took us from be believing in in ghost and being it's all about ghosts it's all about ghosts to kind of going well he's kind of like telling his kid to turn himself in and he's kind of betraying his wife and he's kind of betraying his best friend. And he's kind of, you kind of start to, by the time he kills his dad, and you may not like it, but you kind of understand it. And you're right, like, right. And you also see that he's becoming a man and he's kind of making a decision. Like, I'm not going to let anybody run my life. I'm going to run it. And I'm going right. to, I'm going to be better than you are because he's got, he doesn't have just ghosts. He's got Kanan as a, as a mentor. He's got Tasha. He's got Tommy and he's got Ghost. So yeah. he's, he's kind of the marriage of the, the the best and worst of all of them, you know? Right. That's a good point. Good point. Definitely. So, yeah, man. Yeah, um, it definitely has turned out to be, you know, an excellent, you know, way of everything coming out, you know. And uh, people can't get enough of book two. People really love it. Um, <clears throat> we got uh, one of the guys here, Brillo. He says... They need to turn your water off. <laughs> that was from BMF, basically take you out. He wants you to come back as a ghost so you can keep getting those checks. <laughs> <laughs> they, if they don't turn the water off, he going to keep getting them. He come back as a ghost. That's only one or two uh, appearances maybe. But, um, you know, um, before you get up out of here, because, I, I mean, I could talk to you all day, man, but I know you're a busy man. Um who you got in the Super Bowl, man? The Super Bowl is what tomorrow, right? Yeah. Okay. Who you yes. got, man? You you live in L.A. now. Did you become uh, a person that now claims L.A. now instead of uh, you know? Well, I guess Washington don't have a team. And, Seahawks. Uh, well, the Seahawks, right? Right. Right. So, I'm, a, I'm a Seahawks fan. Okay. Um, and we we kicked ass for a few years there in a row, and Pete Carroll kind of you know made a little mistake there against the Patriots. What you gonna do, man? But, they give it uh, to Beast Mode. <laughs> it kind of made the team fall apart. They all lost confidence in him. Look like Russell Wilson may even be leaving soon. Yeah, which that would be a huge mistake. 
I know. And uh, yes. and then my wife is from Kansas City, so I you know I've also become a, a Chiefs okay. fan. And I think and they're great. They but they kind of like fell apart a little bit here at the at the eleventh hour. Um, and so that that aside, I am not a Rams fan. Okay. Uh, just partially because I just never have been. And if I were to, if I were to be a Rams fan, it would just be because well I'm in L.A. so I'll be a Rams fan. So right. and I'm kind of rooting for the Bengals. I have a friend whose kid is on the team, and okay. so um, and so I'm rooting for him for his sake. I, I think it'd be a lot of fun if uh, he was in acting class with me. Uh, okay, twenty years ago, this guy, and he he just did everything he could to get his kid like all the private coaching, all the stuff, and and he was even on Oprah, and Oprah was like, "Hey, don't you think this is a little bit much? Like, you know, sort of oh, sort yeah. of your kid and all this." He's like, no, nice. he's Super Bowl. Now he's in the NFL. He's been the Super Bowl. Wow. Race. What's what's his name? Well, he's one of the receivers. He actually, I don't think, I don't even know if he's suiting up, but he's getting okay. paid. He's on the team, and I think hey, that, that's what count. He'll get a ring. Yeah, he's young. Yeah, he's he. Right. I, think, I think they get a nice bump if they win the Super Bowl too. Right. But he's, uh, his name's Trenton Irwin. Okay. All right. Well, okay. hey, everybody, root for him, Trenton yeah. Irwin. So I think it'd be fun if they won, and I also, and it, but it's gonna if they win, it's gonna be a huge upset. I think the Rams are hugely favored. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You say he's on the Rams, right? No, no, he's on the Bengals. He's on the, yeah. He's okay. On the, All right. Okay. No problem. They having a magical run right now. They got hot at the right time, and that's yeah. a very young team too. So that they probably like what you said. Don't know no better. They don't even understand how lucky they are because some people like you know. Get never get there, play a whole career, never make it. You know, you're, you're totally right, and you can even see that inside of games. Like you see, like like with Mahomes, this last when the game that they lost, it was they were ahead twenty one to three. Right, right before the half, they made a mistake. They were at the one yard line. Yeah, and then they they didn't score, but still they were ahead. Yeah. 21 to three. Yeah. And, but then they started playing safe. Yeah. And yeah. They, just got their, they get, you know, how do you let, how do you let them come back from three to 21? Like, right, right. I mean, That's what happened there with Atlanta did to the Patriots in the Super Bowl playing safe. Always play to win. Got to play to win, man. And that's the thing. Yeah. It's a good life lesson. Really. It's like, just because it's, you know, they talk about people get a little bit of money and then all of a sudden they get really protective. Like, how do I protect my money? How do I save my money? How do I? I feel like that. I feel like that. And I got to go, yeah. Shane, knock it off, man. Dude, you're in, your, you're in your prime. Like, get it. Get it. Don't worry about, don't worry so much about like what's going to happen in 30 years. It's like, shut up, man. Just keep moving. Keep moving. Don't get safe yeah. now. Don't, don't play it safe now. Put it, believe in yourself. Invest in yourself. You know, yeah, yeah that's, yourself. that's so true, man. Um, I was like that myself about 10 years ago. Um, and then after getting in an accident, you know, I was doing a little real estate, working the job. I owned a few houses. I was driving a nice Mercedes. I was only 33 and I'm thinking I'm doing great. I got plans to do this, do that. And I've been home from work doing 35 miles an hour, slide out in the rain, boom. Now I'm like, oh, man, like, what the hell? Like, I had all these plans and things. Now what I'm going to do? And so I decided, you know what? I'm just going to live my life, make the most out of every day. I'm not going to be reckless and not, you know, have plans, but I'm not going to focus, like you say, on 30 years. I'm going to focus on a few days at a time and in the moment, what can I do now? And then what the hell? I'm going to go for it. I mean, after that, what what's gonna happen if I don't get this gig? Okay, well I didn't have it before, so I'm still here. Yeah, you know, great right, man. It's a, it you in know? some ways like listen, life, every day is a blessing, and 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 unfortunately, shit happens. Like what happened to you? I have yeah. a buddy I went to high school with. who was about to incredible golfer. He was gonna go to the PGA. Wow. He got in an accident. Ended up in a wheelchair, and it was just like, oh my god! Like oh, his whole plan was he was an athlete, and he was gonna do all this stuff. Yeah, and. And what he did was like he just had a mindset of excelling. So he was an incredible golfer. And now he's like a motivational speaker. And he just did the Paralympics. And he's just like, and I was like, man, I wish yeah. 
I, I wonder if I would have that same kind of like gumption, that same kind of like, you know, don't let anything stop you. But life is crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, we all face adversity in our lives. It's at different levels. But, you know, the difference between us is what do we do when we face that adversity? Are we going to adjust and adapt? Or are we going to let it take the best of us, you know, or 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 move on and hide or run or give up? And, you know, it may be whether, like you say, it was tough times where you wasn't getting the gigs for a minute. You didn't give up. You had to, to face that and do what it did, whatever it took to make it to the next level. You know, some people go through that same patch and they say they give up and they don't continue with that path of trying to make it or go Most into action. Do that. Exactly. And yeah. I guess I'll tell you when I when I first hit LA and I was like, you know, 22, I go to an audition and and there'd be a thousand other guys that look basically Ooh. like me for the same job. Right. Five right. years later, there's 250. Mm. Five years later, there's 75. Mm. Here, you know, damn near God, like 25 years later or so. When I go into these rooms now, what I know that I'm in a, a pocket of maybe 10, maybe 10 guys. So from a thousand yeah. to 10, those other 990 people, they were like, ah, they moved back home. They, they did something else. They became a this or became a that. And that's cool. Right. That's cool. I'm not, I'm not knocking it, but they, right, right. at some point their belief and their drive and their, their desire, their hunger and their, and really their belief in themselves broke down. Yeah, which is why we started off talking about how important it is to have those that that support system of people that lift you, because if yeah. people lift you, you can you know sky's the limit. Definitely, so definitely anybody out there listening, man, definitely that's that's a goal right there. That's that's a gem right there. You know, yeah, and it starts. And I'll say this, man. Last thing that I, I think is important. It starts by you being a good friend. Yeah, you being a good friend. Yeah. And 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 the, by the way, the bullshit will it'll peak its head. You'll see. You'll see who they are. You'll know right away. But yeah. The people that you if you lift everybody up around you, and they can't just find the strength to lift you as well, then that's not your friend. Hey, that you are a thousand percent right. I mean, and it happens all the time. Like even in even in YouTube, I've tried to help people and. When it comes for them to do something little for me, they're not there. And some people, you know, because I got a little membership thing as well, and we talk, and some people say, well, Jay, why you kept doing this and that? You know, well, like you said, I'm giving a person enough time so that they show me the bullshit. You played yourself, you know, because I gave yeah. you the shot. I tried to be here and do this and that, and you show me who you are. In return, I was a good friend to you, and that's how you repaid me. So I don't have a problem with cutting you loose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah you, man, did, you did it for me. Yeah, life's too short, and and we, when you got to keep it moving because you can lose you can lose days, weeks, months, years trying to understand why this one particular friend who you may love to death, but they just can't get it together for you. You know. Yeah, they can't get yep. it together for you, and you're like, but I, I'm always there for them. Yeah, always there for them. I don't get it. And then so then you try harder, and you try to understand. It's like, no, nah, man, they're just not. They're just not built that way. They're not built that way. And you know, get the, like I said, get get yeah. the one, two, three, four, five people that you need to build a launching pad for you to take over the world. Definitely, definitely, and make sure they value you you know, as much as you value them. 100%. Yeah, 100%. definitely. All right, man. Well, a lot of people loving these messages and, and stories and everything. Uh, it was definitely great talking to you. Such um, a pleasure, man. It's such a pleasure. You're great. You're fantastic. You're a great actor. I look forward to seeing you and other things, too. But you're yeah. great in force. And, um, and it was really uh, my pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate it. Thank you. And you know, you, you've you been nailing it with Sax. Everybody love to hate DBS, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I can't wait to see how this character unfolds in uh, season three 
of uh you know book two um one of the my favorite parts of book two is watching sax and some of the things he's got going on um i like book th- uh four and the more mcgroner shows a little more but i love to hate Tariq. i'm one of those i don't like him still you killed your pops and all of that I'm not going to, you know, forget that, you know, and I'm well, a, you have a 17 year old son, too. So right. like, hey, man, don't be getting any ideas. That's right. <laughs> I don't care what I tell you. Don't even think about that one. I, hey, that, that's TV. OK, don't don't take it there, boy. Hey, I may not be able to use my legs, but these work just as good. All right. Don't make me go there. All right? <laughs> Thank you. I can oh, I mean, either one where I got the camera, either one, which one you want. You saw I played a prisoner pretty good, so I could do it. You know, it don't matter. You know, no. Nah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but uh, you know, yeah, definitely appreciate the time, man. Uh, I'm gonna let you get out of here, and uh, I normally give a little cash giveaway to the people uh, watching when they put in hashtag J More Reviews. So I don't know if you want to stay for that or not. I'll let you get out of here if you gotta go. But I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, give a little something for everybody's support and coming through. So, well, all right. Well, I'll just sign off. I'll say thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. It's been a pleasure. Uh, if anybody needs anything from me, DM me. Otherwise, um, I'll see you on the screen. All right, man. All right. Hey, you were great. Thanks for coming. And you, you take care. Okay. All right, man. Take care of yourself. Right. No problem. Bye. All right, man, that was, uh, you know, Shane Johnson coming through. Very humble, very down to earth, very talented actor. And I appreciate him taking his time out of his busy schedule to come on through um, and have an interview with me and, you know, answer some questions with everybody. Um, What I'll do um, is anybody um, that put in the hashtag JMoreReviews, I'm going to go ahead and do the cash giveaway, $10 cash app giveaway. So we'll see how many people got it in here right now. Um, As of now, we have only 20 people in here showing 23. Let's see. I appreciate everybody for coming on board. Um, Let's see if I can uh, put this up right quick. All right. So as of now, we got 29. It's 157 people watching. Come on, put it in there. I've only had it scrolling across the screen the whole show. (laughs) So go ahead, put it in. Hashtag J more reviews. Uh, and I'm about to go ahead and uh, do the draw. I'm going to give y'all about one more minute because it's already been plenty of time for everybody to put it through. So time's up. Shout out to Barika. Thank you for, you know, the super chat. Said great interview. A lot of gems in the conversations. It's only up from here. Definitely. And uh, I appreciate, you know, your support and coming through Brillo as well. And, uh, you know, everybody that came through with the super chat, um, definitely appreciate you. And uh, as well as Ray for coming through. And so uh, let's get ready to do this, uh, do this uh, cash, cash giveaway. Not only am I dropping gems, I'm dropping dollars for y'all, man, for the support, appreciation, Everybody, much love, respect. All right, we up to 42. Come on, let's get up to 50 right quick, and then we uh, I'm going to do it. Eight more people. It's still 140 people watching live. Uh, and, yeah, I done already drank a couple bottles right quick. Uh, Savannah called my bottle water gin. <laughs> that gin make you sin, baby. All right. I guess it ain't going to be 50. We got 45, five more. We got five more coming or no? We need four more, four more. We like at the gym. Come on, give me four more, four more. We got four more coming. All right. 
I guess all y'all ballers out there got enough money, man. Like we say, you can't worry about that money. You got to go ahead, just have fun, enjoy life, man. That was one of the jewels that was dropped today. Just go for it. All right, I'm about to hit it. Danielle Barnett. That's a new name I haven't seen before. Danielle, are you here? Danielle, type here if you are still here. That is one of the things you do need to be present. All right, Miss Danielle is here. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you for still participating and coming through. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Danielle, hit me up on Instagram at J Moore Reviews. DM me and uh, I will hook you up with your prize for being a cool person sitting through the show and you know everybody i appreciate all of y'all support everybody for coming through and i hope everybody enjoyed the interview um you know of course we talked about power but a lot of other things that you know may actually be informative and helpful for you in life and you know hopefully a little entertaining a little jokey joke every now and then but you know it was a lot of real talk and uh i hope everybody enjoy it everybody have a good weekend um i gotta get me a little rest today because of course i am gonna be going live at t- well i guess it'll be tomorrow morning at about 1 32 a.m to talk about episode two of force That's when I do my first reactions for the TV shows. So come on through. If you're watching at midnight, I will be talking about it. Um, It's a lot of people starting to talk about it uh, at night. But, you know, um, everybody, you come on through. I've been talking about it for a while, and uh, I definitely enjoy talking about it. So come on through if you up and you want to talk about the episode. I'm looking forward to it. Tommy on that grown and sexy, and he also messy. So I think that's a good combination uh, for a show. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it go. And who knows, I might be making that call. You know what I'm saying? And making the call. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, let me give a shout out to Gina and uh, Sheena and uh, Barika, my mods. I appreciate y'all help and support. Shout out to everybody on my, you know, channel membership that's in the Discord. Um, y'all have been dope. Um, we've been having a good time in Discord, as always, watching movies, TV shows, chatting. And we've been doing trivia lately, which has been fun as well so definitely come on through join the discord you can talk to me about power movies tv shows life we just talk about all kind of stuff so definitely have a great time phil you are not lying i do need to order me some jumex i think i might go ahead and get that replenishment give me two jumex man i can't get them while i'm locked up Get it the you may. <laughs> so definitely. All right, Gina. Thank you um for all your help and support. And uh yeah, everybody take y'all naps. You know, get ready. My Remy, what's up, Remy Ma? That's Remy Ma in the building. What's good? Definitely love talking with you in Discord as well. I just put the link in the description. Well, into the channel chat uh for the video but the link is in the description as well to join up so go ahead hit it up hit me up make sure you're a tommy egan level or higher in order to be a part of the discord and uh i'll see y'all then everybody take care and i'm out of here peace deuces be safe and i'll see y'all tonight 
DJ more the very best reviews. Tell them none can contest we gon'